G'day mate and welcome back to Factorio with me, JD. Now, in the last episode, we got our Covex process set up. Um, we got a lot of our uranium process set up. Um, our train is trying its absolute hardest to bring uranium back and forth and we're actually processing it pretty much faster than, um, than what the train can actually bring it in, which is sort of okay so far, you know, no big hassles. Um, and these things are just about to back up. So the um, centrifuges will have two full crafts in their, in their buffer, basically. So when this gets up to 80, um, that's when it'll start spitting out the excess. Um, obviously the excess from this guy can be picked up by the other ones and the excess from this guy can come down here. Now I have double checked my fuel levels because obviously I, I am using nuclear power still. I actually think I've got enough solar that we should be fine. Um, but yeah, I, I am using nuclear power and I just need to make sure, well, I just need to double check that I've definitely got enough fuel in here in case we run away and leave the base, you know, and, and I don't want power going out because half the base is defended by um, lasers. And it'd be, ooh, don't take that off. I wanted to open it. Um, so I've decided... As we went and got uranium ammo last uh, last episode, we should probably test it out. Um, and we'll actually request 400. And I'll take my traditional ammo and just dump it physically into these machines. Uh, we're not going to quite have 400 rounds. We haven't made quite 400 rounds, but we've made close enough. Yep, sneezing one minute into the episode. Okay, two minutes in the episode. All right, so let's go do some combat. Now, I was talking about getting the uranium tank shells. Oh, do we do that as well? Oh, let's just do it. Let's do it. Um, so the uranium tank shells are very, very easy. Same as the uranium ammo. It's literally take the tank shell and add some dull rocks to the process. Uh, I just got to remember where we automated it. Lasers here. Now, some silly idiot went and built themselves in. Did that help? There to there. Okay. Sure. You can wrap this way. We're uh, going to do the same as before. We're just going to have a single requester chest that sits in the one single spot. We don't have power. Bring over those dull rocks. Uh, have input. Input. Uh, output. Yeah, your standard uranium shells, and then the other one will be the explosive one. Uh, uh, one of those boxes, power, power, power. Now I really am getting in the spaghetti. Uh, we're going to cap that to one because that's going to be more than enough. Uh, okay, so that's that one done. How the hell do I get explosive rounds out of here? First off, we get rid of the power pole. Now we're going full spaghetti. I could literally just have the bots deliver stuff. You now he says it out loud. He's like, that's probably the better way to go. Okay, doesn't matter. We made it to the outside. We can do that, that, that. Um, this will stop me expanding my laser build out any further. But I don't think it needs any expansion. Um, we're going to do explosive uranium rounds. Uh, you two, you two, you. Uh, power up there, power up there. Oh, 
Oh boy, I really should cap those chests. Because I do not need 10,000. 10,000 of any type of uranium t shells. Okay. Uh, explosive cannon shells. Dump straight into there. They're rockets. They're entirely different. Uh, plastic. That's all the random stuff I've managed to pick up. It's not too bad, actually. Uh, and again, we're going to cap you to just one stack, because that's going to be more than enough. Um, and yeah, I'm not going to play with tanks this episode. What I actually want to do is I want to take out my uranium rounds and also show off the personal laser defense, which I don't think we've done. Um, I think I've built it and I've had it built for quite some time, but we haven't actually gone and demonstrated it. And of course, I'd love it, for, love for it to be daytime. Well, there we go. Night vision kicked in. That'll work. So, we've had the biters, as you can see, massing up on our walls for quite some time. And they're nothing more than a nuisance, really. We can lay down enough lasers that it's not really an issue. Um, but obviously, you know, when they cause the lasers to fire, they, they put a drain on our... Um, uh, they put a drain on our power network... Um, and if we tick this, no, that's accumulators. Where's lasers? So we can see all these spikes and that's caused by the biters coming and attacking. So what I want to load is I'm going to load in my personal laser defense. I also want to swap out any robo ports that I have because I shouldn't need the robo ports. Can I make a, no, I can't make another shield. Um, so yeah, swap out my, my, uh, robo ports because they're going to become useless. Um, they're even toggled off. Uh... Now we'll have more personalized defense and less legs. Um, I've taken off some legs as well, so I'm a little bit slower. Kept the shields, because the shields are going to be important. We're going into the combat. And now we're going to go say hi to the to the biters. And as you can see, the lasers that are actually on my armor do a wonderful job of saying hi to these biters. Um, and that's before I even start opening up the SMG, which just eradicates everything between a uranium round uh, SMG and a couple of personal laser defenses um, we can just chew through everything without too much hassle um, some of the when we get to behemoth biters which we're not there yet um, what's our evolution at 0.82 so I think 0 0.9 0 0.95 is when the behemoth biters show up and that's the point where, yeah, uranium rounds start bouncing. Um, they do a lot less damage. The personal laser defense is still doing an alright job, but it won't be like, like this, like a cakewalk. Um, and you'll find at that point your armor piercing ammo becomes just about pointless. It really becomes absolute rubbish. I'm keep, I, I do keep getting hit by the worms, which is quite unintentional. The idea is, as soon as, whenever you see a worm shoot something in the air, you change directions. And then hopefully they never hit you. That's all spitters. Which we're lucky have a lower hit point way lower than the than the biters and of course everything hit me my advantage is actually for the amount of damage those spitters and worms are actually doing my shields and batteries are replacing my shield faster than these guys can take it down you know I do get the slowdown effect but yeah um, my batteries recharge the shields. Where are we? Uh, shields. So energy per hit point is 30 kilojoules and maximum recharge speed is 360. Um, because the shields are all taking a little bit of damage each and I have plenty of power in the batteries, it basically... Basically, I'm getting healed as... Uh, the shields are getting repaired as fast as I'm taking the damage. 
Um, obviously, it doesn't always scale. You know, when you start playing with Behemoth Biters being the next evolution, um, and Behemoth uh, Spitters, and um, especially the Behemoth Worms, that's slightly different. Um, they start dealing out so much damage that they'll obliterate... How many shields am I wearing? Four. They'll, they'll obliterate four shields in half a second without even trying. Um, yeah, worms, we're getting there. I'm going to say hi to everybody first. Uh, and then if this peninsula is cleared... It looks like it is. It means not only can I run out to all these outposts and then start tapping them if we need it, it also means I should be able to pack up the whole, this whole wall of defense. No, we've left a little dot over there. It's very, very important that you go and check everything before you remove your defenses because the biters do re-expand and there is a chance that if you clear a whole area, um, the next thing you get, you know, it's then full of not just one little nest that you happen to leave behind, um, but 50 new nests hoping to come and annihilate and eat your base. Um, it wouldn't be the first time I've actually removed all my defenses to leave something behind to then have it come back and stab me in the back. Um, or make me, make me more regret my decision. Uh, nope, it was just a phantom image on the radar. Good. So, with that whole wall cleared out, and as you saw, we did that quite a f quite quickly, quite effectively. I put my legs back on. Put my RoboPort back on. Make sure they're turned off. No. I want to shore up this corner first, so it actually connects to the wall. Because although the chance of any biters slipping around that bit of coast to then start new biter nests up here is slim to none, it's not worth the risk. It's not worth the risk for that much wall. Uh, no. Uh, that looks like a more coherent blueprint. Uh, deconstruct that part. Paste that in there. Paste. Whoop that in there, paste that in there, we'll throw a robo port up here for good measure, and then we want to, yeah, we want to use that filter deconstructor, I want to say, hey robots, stop sitting around doing nothing, get to work, all of that goes away, uh, this bit of wall that's doing nothing can also go away, and when they pack that up, We'll also find our idle load on our lasers should drop down even further because we've just packed up a few hundred lasers. Okay, more defenses added. Uh, research. So, one of the reasons the personal laser defense works so well is I have maxed out the energy weapons damage, okay, which affects your laser turret damage, your combat robots, which we still haven't played with and uh, combat robot beam, okay. It also affects the personal laser defense, which is probably marked as just laser damage. Yeah, damage laser. So I'm doing 40 plus 92 worth of damage with a shooting speed of three plus 6.6 .6 per second. So because they're fully upgraded, um, it, it, it does a really good job of clearing out biters. Um, a really, really good job. So research wise, Actually, we've done that. We can go do yellow research. Uh, no, we can actually start working our way towards a rocket. Okay, so let's get weapon shooting speed. Uh, projectile damage. Robot cargo side of size, of course. Breaking force. Like we're, we're literally just ticking off the last researches that we don't have. Um, mining productivity is really not worth it. So discharge defense. This one I'm going to explain only because I've just done combat, but I'd never build one. 
Okay, so a discharge defense has been a very, very useless item for four versions of Factorio at least. Um, it has been buffed and buffed and buffed again, but the way it works is not terribly effective. So what happens is you have a discharge remote that you hold in your hand or on your toolbar and you fire it off when you want the discharge defense to work. What it actually does is it has an area of effect. It does a certain amount of damage, 100, which is not a lot, to be honest. It consumes a lot of power out of your shields and your batteries, okay? And then it pushes all the um, biters that are around you in that range of 10 back, okay? Um, and it gives the energy consumption of 800 kilowatts is bring this up one of these guys output 750 um per second so it means not quite once per second you can fire that thing off um but it also means in theory you can't use legs or personal lasers or shields or anything else because your whole battery is going towards that one item um so yeah not what i would call a very effective combat item um, it exists. I've told you about it. That's about the best you're going to get out of me. Because uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's absolute rubbish. Has been forever. We're still going with these miners. This is our starting patch. Thought that'd be done by now. Uh, turn off those because I really don't want my robots doing it. We're going to upgrade this again. Which, as you can see, I have, between episodes, already pasted down one more copy of. Uh, oh. Let me get rid of those power poles. And, actually, I'm probably fairly safe in getting rid of... That one, and that one, because I am willing to bet we've built that many modules in the time. Uh, put that one there. No, I missed stuff still. Chop that down, drop that down. No, I'm I, I don't have enough modules, but it's alright. It'll get it'll get built and we'll we'll fill out the modules slowly over time. Uh, I don't want those in my inventory. Uh, I don't want wall in my inventory. Um, we've got yellow science up and running. Yep. Um, so we've actually got all the sciences running at this point. So oh, the only other thing to do is look at trying to Actually, we can do it with solid fuel. So we need to look at, no, we can look at coal. Coal is suddenly very dead, which is gonna cause plastic to be very dead. Why is coal dead? Coal comes through here, down to here, because we're on our original coal still. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, they're all dead. Okay, so we need to tap this coal because it's the closest and run it into our existing coal belt. How long we got? In theory, we've got like three minutes to get this done. So, let's go to work. Uh, I want to put a splitter in there so I've got something to tie into. Uh, oh. This is far from ideal. I'd much prefer not to be running. Really, I'd have, I'd put a coal station here. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd really prefer not to be running undergrounds through all this mess. I'd really prefer to be doing this a little bit cleaner, but you know, it is what it is. Okay, so I wanna, if I put a coal station there in the future, um, then this would be one of the belts I'll be tapping into. A 
So if I bring that through the general sort of area, I'm pretty happy. Uh, then we're going to run up here and not get hit by any trains. Uh, turn on our personal robots. Go away, cliffs. We're going to go to existing outpost and copy power poles plus the power poles plus the miner in front and miner behind and, and the miners either side. And I want probably that wide. Because that gives us a nice a nice amount to hopefully cover the whole mine in one pass. Or the whole patch in one pass. And I just run like that. That, lo and behold, covers the whole patch in one pass. So, then we're going to have a 4x4 balancer. Because I, I do want to compress these guys down into one belt and a 4x4 four four balancer will take a quarter from each of the lines and feed it into one belt. I probably wouldn't mind having a second belt of coal, uh, just not to, not just yet. Um, I'd have to find some way to spaghetti it through the base and probably upgrade coal production. And sometimes for all that hassle, it's just easier to upgrade it to blue belt to get us the higher three. Uh, oop, train. Uh, trains are the real enemy. They will happily squish you without even a second thought. Um, you have been warned. They'll run you over and not even slow down to snicker about it. Uh, that one. Okay, coal belt done. Uh, as always, I want to prioritize pulling from the left. And so that's causing a problem for that, but that is blue belt. So there is a chance, because we are pulling off coal for grenades, um, even though in theory grenades are going back onto the line. Uh, logistic storage. 110, okay. So it's not that much in storage. Um, which will be 100 there and 10 somewhere else. So... Yeah, in theory, I'm probably looking at the point where I, I should really have two coal lines or probably upgrade the existing line to blue belt all the way through. Uh, you're flat out there. How long do we have? Episode should sort of be done by now. Yeah, you know what? I think we're going to upgrade to blue belt. Now, I could start with Blue Belt up here, but Blue Belt is 31 iron, Red Belt is 11 iron. So it's actually three times, basically three times more expensive to have Blue Belt than it is Red Belt. Um, just the same as Red Belt's 11 iron, two Yellow Belt is three iron. So, you know, this runs at a speed of one, this runs at a speed two, this runs at a speed of three. This costs one, this costs 30. There is a really big difference in, in, in total cost for, for faster belts. So, what we're going to do is we're going to check to see why the robots are in trouble. Uh, and... So, JD, did you ever bother hooking water up to the other half of your nuclear reactor? No, JD, I didn't bother hooking up water to the other half of my nuclear reactor. Why, JD? Uh, reasons? Mm. I know somebody's been yelling at me in the comments. It's fine. It's fine. We've been overproducing lots of power off one side. Uh, let's be honest, we, we've, we've got so much power, it's not really an issue. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a second red belt. 
which is still overkill. Oh! I told you the trains are out to get you. They won't even slow down. No, 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 no remorse. Just yeah. Spawn is down here. It's been a long time since I was here. Okay, so first thing you got to do, well, first thing I recommend you do when you respawn is get outside the lodging network as fast as possible. Because the robots are going to bring me everything I've requested, which is currently on my body. I don't really want another copy of all of it. So I'm getting outside the orange area and running through this, this green area wherever possible. Um in hopes that I can get up here, recover my body, and then, nope, that's the closest one, and then get back out of the area, so they don't bring me all the crap that I don't need. So I don't need a pistol. Uh, that ammo can go with that ammo, that flamethrower can go down there, that can go down there. My shields didn't stop a thing, the train just steamrolled right through them. I do not need this 13 solar panels. And we're good to go. Now, come back up here and stand further away from the train tracks. I have robots do things. Uh... Okay. So, I'm doing this in, a, in an effort to save belts. Still fairly easy to get through. Okay, so this is the point where it's going to start getting too hard to get material through here. So what I want to do is I'm going to put down a bread splitter, and then we're going to use our trusty upgrade planner, and we're going to set it to go from bread. No, let's just use the normal one. Upgrade that. Upgrade that. Upgrade that. Upgrade this. 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 That. Uh, okay, no, let's let's get a filtered one. We want to go from red to blue, red to blue, red to blue. Okay, use that, and that way we can just walk along with it. Upgrade that, upgrade that, upgrade all of that. Uh, that one, that one. This line going down to grenades can stay at red speed. It could have actually stayed at yellow speed, to be honest. Um, yellow speed was more than fast enough for it. Uh, but beside doing coal, we definitely want to upgrade. Because um, we're going to start to actually have to either further increase our plastic output hopefully not hopefully a blue belt's enough um but we are going to have to start where it comes up here start using this end of the plastic belt to start making low density structures um which needs copper which you can see we are now finally getting towards the end of the bus um it's not here fully yet but it's it's there's definitely some trickle, which is a good start. Um, our science, our research is running. So the whole base is up and ticking along. Um, and some materials making it to the, to the end of the bus, which is always a good sign. Um, obviously, we'd like more material. But at the moment, we're using a lot of that material to make modules um, to then, you know, save ourselves more copper at this end of the bus. Right. Um, and maybe I should be a little bit more picky and go, what actually uses a lot of copper? These, but I have to upgrade all of them to use copper. And because I can't get beacons in there, I actually have to just extend the build to account for how, how much it slows down. Um, that's actually really about it. Yeah, our biggest copper use is, is definitely green circuits. Now, there's nothing stopping me um, to go and tap, say, this copper, this copper and this iron and make a separate off-site build for green circuits 
and just train in green circuits and add them in on the bus um, to stop using the bus copper and the bus iron to make these green circuits. There is nothing stopping me do, doing that. And that's not a half bad idea. If I had an iron and a copper like here, close to one another, like here, close to one another, that wasn't being used, like, yeah, here, um, that would probably be a very, very good idea to go tap those two, put down the smelters on the spot, make green circuits on the spot and train them into the base. Um, but yeah, I feel like we got some good progress made. Um, we killed lots of biters. They deserved it. They looked at me funny. And um, with that, I guess I'll see you guys in the next episode where I have no idea what we're actually going to do. Um, probably automate more things and um, hope that our module production keeps up. Um, oh no, we're going to do rocket fuel. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do rocket fuel in the next episode. Um, because we need rocket fuel to get rockets off the ground, which is a big part of, yeah, Factorio. So thank you guys for watching. As always, do hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. All right, bye.